how you're setting you up to fail. Help with diversity and inclusion. You know, I'm always like, when that happens, say yes. Don't say, I don't know how to make a movie. Like, that's how I made my first film, was that I was like, I know what's going on. I didn't at all. And I think it showed. That is why you fail. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to Genealogy. <laughs> Hello there, my YouTube TV and I, your unfriendly neighborhood Skeletor. And today, I, Skeletor, have got a bone to pick. That's right, prepare yourself. Today, I, Skeletor, am going to unleash his fury. <laughs> <laughs> now this is a video I've probably wanted to make for a while now, but since I have always vowed to stay away from these particular topics, I mean not always, sure I've had my fair share of rants before, but I just haven't had an in lately to do that, as my I could give a crap beater was pretty low. <laughs> However, not today. Today I, 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 I've had it. My give a crap beater is pretty high. Now I know a lot of you out there are saying, Skeletor, what could have happened out there that got you so angry? What did he then do? Huh? Unfortunately, this time it had absolutely nothing to do with he then. <sighs> I was worried. Well, at least I don't think it does. <laughs> but as far as I know, he has nothing to do with it. I wonder. So what's got my bones in a twist? Now I'm pretty sure that a lot of you out there have noticed that a certain Star Wars series has been getting a lot of attention lately. I mean, it's hard not to notice. I mean, YouTube is practically littered with videos about why the Acolyte sucks, and the Acolyte is this, and the Acolyte is that, and Disney is this, and Disney is that. Wow. Okay. 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 Pretty hard to miss, right? Now, my Skeletor is going to be frank with you. Like I said before, I could care a less about the Acolyte. Not a lick. I gave up on Star Wars after Ryan Johnson's debacle. <laughs> and I haven't been back since. I didn't care about the Mandalorian. I know, I know a lot of you are like, what? The Mandalorian was good. And I say, sure, if you think mediocre is good, then fine. I mean, it was all right. For me, it felt more like I can't believe it's not Star Wars than Star Wars. I love butter. It's not butter. Of course it's butter. Nope. For six months, you've been eating... I can't believe it's not butter. Like, we always got these weird characters, like, I can't believe it's not Yoda, Yoda. I can't believe these are not Jawas, Jawas. The Mandalorian himself. I can't believe it's not Boba Fett, Boba Fett, right? Try, I can't believe it's not butter. It's I can't believe it's not butter. This is the way. It was a good facsimile of Star Wars, but they never felt like Star Wars to me. However, I will say, of all the Star Wars properties out there since, the originals, I would say, is probably the closest Disney has ever come. Yeah, maybe Rogue One. Oh That's about it. This is no longer Star Wars. Everything Disney has made, in my opinion, is nothing but Mickey Mouse fan fiction. You can be Luke's son, you can be Han Solo's son, I don't give two shits in a popsicle! That's not why I'm upset. Because I've given up on that a long time ago, and I suggest for your particular sanity, you do as well. You're setting yourself up for disappointment. No, if the acolyte sucks, well, what did you expect? <laughs> I don't know why people are still so surprised. I'm like, yeah, of course it sucks. It was going to always suck. So I don't know why we need a thousand channels to complain about that. No, my problem, though, is a whole different thing. My bone to pick has to do with something a lot higher than that. Grander than that. You see, when I watch these Star Wars rant videos from, say, the usual critical drinker, film threat, these are my personal favorites, and a lot of other ones, Doomcock, and, you know, to be honest, I actually enjoy it. When these YouTubers take Disney down a peg, I can't help it. I'm evil. And I can't help but, you know, take some form of sadistic pleasure in watching Critical Drinker or these other channels take the piss out of everything and anything Disney. It's fun for me. <laughs> How dare you? Well, at least it used to be. But I don't find it fun anymore. And that is the reason for why I made this video. You see, something dawned upon me when I was trying to watch a film review of this particular acolyte. And he started off with a statement like, I can't believe I wasted my time on this. 
which I was like, Haha, you fools, that's why I'm gonna talk, go! You are not worth bothering about! But that's not the part that bothered me. No, the part that bothered me was what he said right after that, that he had to watch it four times so that he could properly discuss it. Four, four times? Are you serious? And he wasn't joking, he was literally saying I had to watch it four times and take notes. Listen, I've watched my fair share of some of these series to know that you don't need to take notes to figure out how bad it is. It's bad right off the hop, and to take notes is a waste of time in general. But to watch it four times while taking notes? You know that scene? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Well, shame on you all. Shame, shame, shame. Shame on you. That's right. Shame on all of you out there who are still out there giving Disney even one view, let alone four on Disney Plus. Are you serious? I will cut you. I had to watch the same episode four times for me to really grasp how bad it was. Because it was such a drain on my time that I had to make it drain my time four times as much. Right. And then you all proceed to complain about the same things that you've complained about all the other series. It was written like an amateur and it was woke and all this other stuff. Now normally, I skeleton would take pleasure in me. But I couldn't. I would say this is probably the first time that I Skeletor turned off a video of its kind. You know, usually I see it all the way through because I want to hear what they have to say. This time I just couldn't. It was so generic that even the ranting and the review was generic. To the point where I was like, already I know where you're headed with this. And it's actually more infuriating that you're giving this your time. And I started finding myself getting more mad at the YouTuber and less mad at Disney, because you have yet to figure out what's going on. You and me are gonna have a long talk when this is over. Like I said, this is nothing against the Critical Drinker or any of these other channels that, that do this, but it's like, how long are you going to beat your head against the wall on the same topic while being played by Disney? Like, I'm sorry, I know a lot of you are out there looking at the statistics. You know, look at Disney's failing. Disney stock just keeps going down and down and down. They're losing money. And you're constantly pointing to the charts of Disney stocks falling off the cliff. And then Bob Iger is all like, eh, no, it's going on with my stocks. And another film is announced and it's downvoted to oblivion. But then Kathleen Kennedy's just like, fuck it, make it my name. You will consistently say to yourselves again, I don't understand this. I mean, don't these people at Disney want to make money? Do they not even understand how to make money? Eh, well. Let me put it very simply for you all, who haven't got it yet, they don't care about making money. LIAR! Now I know what you're going to replace. Of course not, because they're all activists. They care more about the cause, right, Skeletor? They care more about the, what does Critical Drinker say? The message. Once again, I, Skeletor, have to intervene and say, No, that's the lie. That's the rule, they tell you. They couldn't care one bit about the message. They want you to believe they care about the message, but they don't actually care. Oh boy, I sure believe that! Now I will agree that in the creator level, it's probably about woke agenda. You know, at the director level, producer level, perhaps at the writer level. At that level, yes, probably is about the message. But I'm talking about higher up. Even higher than Bob Iger. Way up there at a tippy tippy top. Do you know who's way up there at the tippy tippy top of Walt Disney? I own all this shit now! I own the Death Star! I own Tatooine! It's all mine! I mean, so high that even Bob Iger looks up to them and say, Hello! <laughs> you know who they are? Go look them up. Who are the number one shareholders for Disney? They're two companies, right? The two largest companies in the planet. Vanguard, number one. And BlackRock, number two. They're the ones out there funding this agenda. You're lying! I'll cut you up! <laughs> now, you ask yourself, but Skeletor, they have to care about making money at some point. Well, do they? Because it doesn't seem like it. Evidence doesn't point to that, does it? Why make trillions when we could make... Billions? You know, somewhere at that tippy tippy top level, there is something rotten going on. And I mean more rotten than either side could fathom. And I'm talking the people on the woke and the people on the anti-woke side. You are both being played by that tippy tippy top. That's impossible! That's right, you're being played for suckers. Trust me, I know about playing suckers. <laughs> I'm Skeletor. That's kind of my jam. So I could definitely recognize it when I see it. This is becoming a wonderful day for evil. For those of you out there who think that Disney is doing such a bang-up job with your 
representation. I'm going to offer you a bone. Let's just say, for argument's sake, we do want to help bring about more diverse, more female voices. Give chances to more female directors, female-centric films. Right? Let's just say that's the actual goal here. Not to mention the other quote-unquote marginalized communities. We need those voices to be heard. We need to show equality. Now let's look at Disney from this point of view, shall we? Have they done anything at all for diversity and inclusion? Have they? Name one actress who's had a thriving career since their Disney debut. Can you name one? Ask Brie Larson. How's her career doing? I really don't know. I don't have the answer to that. Does anyone want me to do it again? <laughs> How about the one who played She-Hulk? I don't even remember her name. <laughs> Where's she right now? You're fired. <laughs> name me one film or one actress whose career was made by taking this route that Disney is taking. You know the answer is? Well, we're waiting. Absolutely zero. None. Careers are made and they're destroyed. Shut up! So why do we keep perpetuating this lie that they're doing wonderful things by giving opportunities to people who have not gotten opportunities in the past? Hmm, there's something funny going on here. Now I'm going to speak directly to you all. You know, the actresses who played the race-swapped Little Mermaid, or the, the No Dwarves having Snow White actress, or even Brie Larson. Let me talk to you all. You know, bonehead to woman. <laughs> Do you think that Disney has given you every opportunity to succeed? Are they actually helping you break the ceiling? Or are they setting you up to fail? What's the more likely scenario here? Why is that every time a film is announced, there's some form of controversy back behind it? Weird. Weird. And not only is there controversy, but there's no shortage of clips of the main actress or director saying some ludicrous thing to aggravate and annoy the audience. I do not need a 40-year-old white dude to tell me what didn't work for him about A Wrinkle in Time. The original cartoon came out in 1937, and very evidently so. Um, I like to make men uncomfortable. It's extremely dated when it comes to the ideas of women being in roles of power. Well, I mean, white people crying actually was the goal. There is a big focus on her love story. Um, with a guy who literally stalks her. <laughs> and we're in 2024 now, and I think uh, it's about time that we had a woman uh, come forward uh, to shape the story in a galaxy far, far away. You know that like that's how they effectively made white people really afraid. If I'm gonna stand there 18 hours in a dress of an iconic Disney princess, I deserve to be paid for every hour that it is streamed online. Why? Because that's the point, Skeletor. We got to be in their face. We got to show them they're wrong. That's the only way they'll learn. We got to make them feel uncomfortable. Well, sure. If that's your goal, is to make people uncomfortable, fine. But is that really going to help your cause? No. How does that help your cause exactly? Leaving a horrible impression does not help the cause of, you know, diversity and inclusion. How does setting you up to fail help? with diversity and inclusion. You know, I'm always like, when that happens, say yes. Don't say, I don't know how to make a movie, because men don't say that. <laughs> you are reckless. I'm telling you guys, like, the truth. Like, that's how I made my first film, was that I was like, I know what's going on. I didn't at all, and I think it showed. Nick, it's why you fail. You know, let me explain this using a baseball analogy. You know, my favorite type of analogy. I mean, I could use a female analogy, but I think a baseball one is far more apt. Oh, no. Let's just say that the New York Yankees, the number one team in baseball, you know, the biggest audience, the loudest, rowdiest fans, let's just say the owners of the New York Yankees said, you know what, we want to hire more evil villains as pitchers because we believe that they deserve a chance, right? And so they find me, Skeletor, someone who I really have never pitched in the big leagues before. The most I've ever pitched was what? House League level back in Eternia in the Minion Leagues between me and Hordak. That's the most I've ever done. It's stupid! And then so they decided, hey, let's give this guy a chance. Hey, Skeletor, how would you like the opportunity to pitch for the New York Yankees? Pitch for the New York Yankees. That's right, we'll give you a nice big salary and it'll start you on your wonderful career as a baseball player. So I agree to it. Now, do they snowball me in? Do they have me work my way, you know, through the minor league system, learn the ropes from different coaches, figure out my techniques? No. What do they do? They throw me into my first game 
in the ninth inning with men on pace in extra innings in the final game of the pennant. And I'm like, are you sure about this? And like, yeah, yeah, you got this, right? You got it. And now the fans are out there in the stands going, what the hell is this? Who the hell is this guy? Bellator? What has he ever done? They're gonna put him in? They're all starting to get very antsy and angry, kind of confused at what's going on. And so then I end up proceeding to pitch. And of course, not only do we lose the game, we lose the game horribly. Well, chances are I'd probably use my magic in a real scenario. When we win the game, or I find a way to cheat. But for my analogy, let's just say I pitched an almost game and lost as predicted. And the fans do not like this one word. And of course, the New York Yankees ownership don't want to take responsibility. No, they're out there blaming the fans. You fans out there are nothing but racists and bigots. You don't like blue-skinned, bone-faced villains. You're villainists out there. You know, and I echo the same thing. I'm like, you all out there. It's not my fault. It's all your fault. You're not giving me a chance. It was your boos and hisses in the crowd that led me to fail. That's that's what it was. Boo! Oh, boo yourself. Is that going to change the fans? No. But over time, even the most devout New York Yankee fan will probably start turning away from their own team. Right? Wow, this is... Uh... This is a black day for baseball. Well, what happens to me, Skeletor, after that game? Well, I get ridiculed in the media. They pick on me non-stop. And that would probably be the last time I pitch the game. In the minors or anywhere else. This is the worst day of my life! <laughs> Did that help my career? No! It hurt my career. Did that help the fans? No! It hurt the fans. Did the team make money? No, they lost a lot of money. Well, who won? That's the question. Who did win? In this situation, if the woke people didn't win, the crowd who loves the Yankees for all this time, the vote fans of the Yankees, if they didn't win, and if the company didn't make money, so who exactly is winning in this scenario? I don't know, Coast Guard. And that's where I believe the problem lies. Right? This is not about making money, folks. This is not about diversity quotas. This is not about making good stories and keeping Star Wars alive. None of the evidence supports any of it. The only thing I can see it supports is division. I would be worried if everybody across the board was like, yeah, that was a good movie. And then there are other people who walk out literally saying that was the worst movie I've ever seen. Having those two extremes to me is the mark of uh, the type of movie that I want to make. How about no? That's right. Listen. Known that I, Skeletor, am an evil villain, and I am also known as a tyrant. And as an evil lord in Eternia, I have a lot of powerful minions out there. And each one of those evil, powerful minions are gunning for my job. Someday I'll show you what. And since I want to maintain power over my minions, I have to keep demoralizing them. You pathetic pair of pitiful pinheads! I have to pit one against the other. You know, I sneak around in corridors, you know, whispering. Did you hear what Merman said about Evelyn? <laughs> huh? And then what? Who said what about who? And then they're fighting and brawling amongst themselves because I know that if they one day decide, hey, you know what? We all band together, we could take down Skeletor and rule for ourselves. I have no loyalty to Skeletor. It's his power I want. And I, Skeletor, can't have any of that. So, of course, I have to constantly create division within my own right. That's the only way to maintain control. <laughs> so, who's at the tippy tippy top? I don't know. I mean, I really don't know. I mean, we could say it's the two major shareholders, but who's on top of them? Who's pulling their strings? I am in control. I've been in control since the 50s. We don't know, but that's irrelevant. That's not what this rant is even about. You see, my rant is an appeal to you all. That's right. I'm trying to make an appeal to both sides here. Understand what's really going on. You know, the critical drinkers of the world, old Star Wars fans, the old Marvel fans. I want you guys all to listen up. Just as I want you woke crowd who wants, you know, to see the diversity and inclusion stick around. You know, diversity and inclusion can be done well. Is that even possible? Of course it could be done well want to break the proverbial ceiling, you don't do it by creating animosity and anger and distrust. You don't do it like that. You don't hire the most, you know, abrasive, angry, radical person to represent your cause. Because all you're going to do is push people away. Do you know the old saying, honey works better than vinegar? You're going to push that ceiling higher and higher. Because the whole goal 
of having a female. He isn't just a throw and unlikable person who represents your cause in the ninth inning to fail and then be belligerent and make all kinds of excuses. She shouldn't have mouthed off like that. That's not how you break ceiling. You break ceiling by seeing the adversity, accepting it, and then overcoming it. That's how winning is done. And not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. They don't care. For them, it's about something completely different. Disney is no longer an entertainment company, and I want you all to realize that it's not there to entertain or to bring back the former glory. Disney, as you remember it, it's not there to bring the former glory of Star Wars or Indiana Jones or whatever properties they own. Because if they did care, they would hire more appropriately, right? Weird. Weird. You think that Rachel Ziegler and these other fools out there spitting verbal diarrhea out their mouth on the microphone, you think that that's not planned? I really don't know. I don't have the answer to that. Listen here. The Barbie movie has proved one thing. That if a studio wants to keep their agenda quiet, they're fully capable of doing so. Yes, I know. It's amazing. You think those were accidents? Or do you think that maybe, just maybe, you know, they're hiring particular people with a particular viewpoint because they know that these particular people with particular viewpoints are going to slip up and are going to say, you know, what they truly believe. And that's going to infuriate people. And that's the point. You are tearing me apart! And like I said, even if they were out to give representation and help people break into the industry, they're doing it the dumbest and most ridiculous way possible to the point where they either have to be really, really stupid or then they're obviously after something else. World domination. World domination? Mental note, the girl knows too much. So, what's the conclusion here? Well, look, for those of you who want to see Disney shape up, they're hoping for Disney to collapse so bad financially that they'll be forced to make firings and forced to right the ship. Well, I hate to break this to you all, but that's not ever going to happen. You're more likely to see the demise of all of Hollywood before that happens, and then maybe someone else will, will buy up the ruins and remains of what's left over. But remember, that's probably their end game anyway. They don't care. They're using Disney as a weapon or a tool. Nothing more. Nothing less. That's a propaganda tool to divide. Disney, Kathleen, Kennedy are gonna get you! Ah! On the side of the woke and the side of the anti-woke, you're all being played like puppets on a string, like fools, angry at each other, fighting. Go ahead, make a fool of yourself. When really you don't have to fight, you could be on the same page. There's nothing wrong with having diversity. There's nothing wrong with making good films either. Both could coexist at the same time. It has been done and can be done. Explain how. Look at Fallout. Female lead. Actress. Didn't say anything offensive at all. In fact, she said the opposite. You have to deeply, deeply respect the source material. It made it even more exciting when I put the Bolt suit on or the Pip-Boy for the first time. And that's all these fans want to hear, right? They're willing to follow her because she said the right thing. She's not provoking anyone. She's not putting anyone down. She's not saying I hate white men and all this crap. Weird. Weird. In the end, my friends, it comes down to this. The people on the tippy top of Disney, they want you fools to fight. They want you to make your acolyte video ranting and angering and bad review. You know why? So that they can say you're racist. That's why they set up the scenario for that. They don't care if you're going to come out with a thousand really good points as to why the show sucks. Because they've already pre-set it up. They've got the most boisterous, controversial person they could find to already set you up. It's a setup, you know, so that they could point the finger. You're racist. You know, rinse and repeat since 2016. Okay, so I don't know if it was a race thing or a lady thing, but I'm mad as hell. But, you know, keep fighting, you all. Right? I have no skin in the game. I don't care. Not at all. I could care less about Acolyte. I could care less about any of this anymore. I see what's coming. I know that the demise of Hollywood is at hand. And the people in the TV top don't care. They couldn't care less. The people in the other layers will. Sure, those people who are pro, oh, well, we want diversity in our films and music in the industry. How can you have diversity in an industry that no longer exists? So, at some point, you two are going to have to compromise, right? You guys are going to have to see the truth for what it is. Come together, come together, right now, over Skeletor. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. He's a villain, a real mixer. Listen, it doesn't matter what race you come from. In the end, we're all the same race, right? The human race. Well, 
You are not me. I'm the demon race. But, you know, I'm speaking on your behalf. <laughs> right, you're all part of the same race, and you all share one crucial thing, the human experience. And it doesn't matter how rich you are, how poor you are, where you were brought up, what color skin you are, or who you prefer to quote-unquote bone. <laughs> Every last one of you suffers the same emotional thing. You all have the same insecurity, the same struggles, the same loneliness, the same affection, the same sorrow. It all may present itself in different ways, but inside you're all the same. And that's all that matters. And the sooner you guys understand this, and stop saying, well, my experience is worse than yours, and you're privileged because of this, and all that nonsense, in the end, feelings are feelings. And everyone has them. Well, again, except me, Skeletor. <laughs> except for once a year, around Christmas, look it up, it's a thing. I don't know what's happening to me, but I must save the children. <laughs> but you all do, and it's all the same. And when you tell a story from that perspective, the perspective of a human being, and put those human stories to paper and pen, well, guess what? Every single last one of you humans will relate to it. What do they teach you to talk like this? Sell crazy someplace else. We're all stocked up here. And that's all I have to say. I know I said a lot, but I think it all had to be saved. I think both sides are putting the wrong emphasis on the wrong salam. And you keep doing it over and over again. Quiet, you drunk. There's something seriously wrong with you. Anyway, enough of my blathering. <laughs> Let me know what you all think in the comments. You agree with me, Skeletor? Something is rotten, and it's rotten from the head. And I'm talking about the tippy tippy top. And at the tippy tippy top, there are the players. And the rest of you all are all pawns. Who believe they're kings and bishops or whatever. But you're all being used the same. Disney? He's gonna get you! Kathleen Kennedy's gonna get you! So anyhow, make what you want of that. Now that I've said my piece, I'll go back to my regular scheduled programming, trying to entertain and make you all laugh and do what I do. Nevertheless, I had to get that off my chest. Anyway, if you like this, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to Shady Allergy. Until next time.